So I just posted my review for the Anbernic RG35XXH just the other day, and while I did have a lot of good things to say about it, probably the most negative thing, besides the cheap SD cards that they shipped in here, uh, absolutely self-destructing and requiring me to reflash the operating system. The worst thing about this is probably just the operating system itself. It's just not very feature rich. It's not very nice to look at. It's very, very bare bones. And I got a lot of comments about potentially flashing a new operating system called, I'm guessing that's Batocera Lite. If there's a correct way to pronounce it that, I don't know what it is. And basically what this is, is an alternative operating system for this device. It's one of the greatest things about these weird little handhelds is that you almost always wind up with somebody making some sort of alternate operating system. So what I'm going to do is very quickly show you how to flash it and then I'm going to install it on my device and see what it's like. So first link in the description will be this page. You're going to scroll all the way down and click on this guy right here. This is going to download a file in a .gz format to extract that. I use WinRAR, so I will drop a link in the description to WinRAR as well. You're also going to need something called Rufus, which is my personal favorite to actually flash this image you're about to download onto your SD card. So over here, once WinRAR is installed, you're gonna right click on that file, you download it, and you're going to extract it here. That's where that's going to pop up. Take the SD card, you're gonna flash this thing too, and plug that into your PC. At that point, you're going to double click on Rufus, select the drive you're going to install it to, select the image file that you just now extracted, and click Start. It's going to obviously erase everything off of that card. So if it's the same card that your device came with, grab everything off of there that you need. Grab your saves, grab your ROMs, grab everything that you need. Now, strangely on this thing, it looks like we have a lot of unallocated space, and I'm wondering if what's gonna happen whenever I actually plug this thing in and boot it, if it's going to adjust for that and kind of fix that problem. Otherwise, you'd have to maybe expand, but I don't actually even see where you would be putting your ROM. So I'm wondering if it is going to actually format that partition whenever we do this. So we'll plug it in, we'll boot it up, see what's going on, and then we'll come back to the computer and actually put our ROMs back on it. So we're gonna pop that SD card in. It's the only card that's actually in there. Let's hold down the power button and see what happens. I'm pretty sure this thing has a charge on it, although <laughs> the standby on this thing uh, with the stock operating system is terrible so it is possible that it was left in standby for a day and it was fully dead because of that all right we have a screen that has popped up here so clearly the installation has gone correct this does not look like the original operating system at all and i'm assuming i'm hoping i'm wondering if the reason this little progress bar is moving so slowly I'm wondering if that's not exactly what I thought was going to happen, that it is actually doing some formatting stuff. A lot of these disk images, whenever you do these installations, like the stock operating system, they're meant for a specific sized SD card. So 64 gig card typically is what we're supposed to be looking for. This did not seem to have any such instructions. So I'm kind of assuming it's able to adapt itself to whatever size card you have. We're gonna let this thing roll and pick back up here in just a moment. So we are up and running, and in fact, we have some like background music going on. That's pretty interesting. And as you can see, this is an entirely new interface that we are scrolling through, favorites, all games. This is a much more visually pleasing interface. And it looks like they've actually got like one game per system already on here, but of course that's going to be it. So what we're gonna need to do now is turn this thing off, pop out my SD card, and see if we can drop some games on there. So we've plugged the SD card back in, and we now have the Batocera drive, which is what seems to be your boot information, your boot logo, which is this guy here. You could actually swap that out if you wanted to. Some stuff we're going to ignore, and then share is over here. That's where our ROMs are going to go, and there is a ROMs folder. So as simple as that, I'm going to go grab the ROMs I want, I'm gonna drag them into the appropriate folders. So we have popped this SD card back in after loading it down with some of my games of choice. You can see that this first boot process 
is still taking quite a while. I'll have to test how the standby function is on this thing. How much battery are you losing? Is there a reason to long press it to hold it down until it fully shuts down? Or can you leave it uh, in sort of a standby mode? We're also going to need to go in here and turn off this music. Sound settings, front end music. Let's turn that off. We'll jump into N64. And as you can see, I don't have any artwork for these games. And I wonder, did I see a scraper here? I did. Let's connect this thing to Wi-Fi. When you hit that button, just be patient. It's taking a second to enable, but something is indeed happening. There we go. So let's connect to that Wi-Fi. That keyboard was much more responsive than it was on the old operating system. I can already tell you that. Again, we're kind of uh, frozen up here for the moment. I think something's happening. Wi-Fi is enabled. I hope that means it's connected. So let's go down and hit scrape now. An error has occurred. Let's go back in. Okay, so I went back into the scraper and I changed it from screen scraper to the games database and hit scrape now. And as you can see, it is doing its thing. So if you don't know what that means, what it's doing is it's going through and it is grabbing the artwork. As you can see, there's one that it's pulled. It's grabbing the artwork for these games. This is already much more feature rich than what we had on the other operating system. All right, so that is a pretty darn useful feature. You can see it has grabbed some artwork for every single game. Let's jump back into the N64 section and we'll fire up Super Mario 64. I dig that animation loading in there as well. This is such a more polished looking operating system, guys. Let's see how the games actually run though, because that's the most important thing. So we're in Mario 64 now, and this is a game that I think oftentimes will suffer from some graphical glitches, and it looks as though that's definitely happening here, but it's running really quite well. So they have Z mapped to that key, which I don't necessarily love, but I think I could get used to it. So I ran up here real quick and got this first star so that I could manually save it so that I can try and figure out what some of these hotkeys are without having to go through this opening section again, backflip into the star, running superbly. Okay, so I think I figured out some of the hotkeys. So function key and Y will save in a save state. Same thing in X will load you back into that first save state. Hotkey and start will close the game. Hotkey and A will reset the game. Hotkey and right will fast forward. Left would rewind if that was possible in this game. If you hit up or down, I think it's supposed to change what save state slot you're in. All right, so we'll uh, let's try saving a state there. And now we'll try changing the slot. I don't think there's anything on the screen that tells you this. And if I try to load... It's not going to do anything because there's no there's nothing saved in that slot. So we'll save in that slot now and then load and it should put us back. I don't think there's anything on the screen that's telling me that I'm changing the slot, but it appears that's what's happening. So I'm going to jump into a game that in the review pretty much pushed this thing to its limits. And I'm just curious if there's any difference. I don't think that there's going to be. Like I can't imagine changing operating system is going to suddenly make Vice City Stories on the PSP. Uh, playable where it wasn't before but stranger things have happened so we're gonna go hop on our bike and we're gonna get out of this base and hit some of the areas that gave it trouble before it's like I know what I'm doing I will say that it is definitely running a native resolution and not at 2x which is where it was on the stock operating system so that's interesting Although, I, again, I don't think it's going to make a big difference because I tried changing the resolution before and it, yeah. See, we're dropping a lot of frames now. Yeah, okay. Very, very stuttery. Interestingly, the audio is not really stuttering. The audio is staying perfect, but the game is certainly still stuttering quite a bit. Now, in this emulator, the function key actually opens up this menu here where you can do a save state that way. Not bad. And you can also jump into your settings. This is the same emulator that it ran on the other operating system, which is probably why 
not a huge difference there. Let's go to frame skip one and percentage of FPS seemed to work best for me before. So we'll see if that gets us anywhere here. Hmm. This is interesting. Okay, there's our slowdown. And that is approaching that area where I wouldn't necessarily want to play it. But because at least the audio is holding, yeah, make it hard to play. <laughs> and I just hit a police officer. It's better, but it's not, it's not fully fixed. Overall, though, guys, I have absolutely no qualms in telling you that this is what you should be doing. Don't even worry about the native operating system. This seems to be significantly better than what it ships with. So it's got my recommendation. The only thing that I need to test now, and I'm going to do this, you're not going to see any of this. For you, it will be as if nothing has happened. For me, what's going to happen is I am going to reference that it's a 90% battery. I'm going to, let's fire up a game. And what I'm going to do once I get to a splash screen here is I'm going to put us into standby by pressing that power button once. And then we're going to see what it's like in the morning. Let's see where that battery percentage is. And roughly 12 hours later, the answer is not that great. It is still draining very, very quickly. It seems like that standby option, whether you hit the power button or you do it through this option here, it's basically just shutting down the screen. So I would suggest that you shut down the system if you want to preserve the battery. If you're done playing for an extended amount of time, just go ahead and shut down the system. There is this fast shutdown system option. Let's try that really quickly and let's see what difference that is in, or I guess what difference there is in regard to booting the thing back up now because that's the biggest problem when you fully shut it down. Booting it back up, turning it back on takes forever. So let's see if this option is any faster. We still have our splash screen here. And honestly, this doesn't appear to be any faster than the normal shutdown. So yeah, that would be my advice. If you're done playing for an extended amount of time, go ahead and fully shut the thing down. Don't rely on just hitting the power button because if you do that, you're liable to go dead in your pocket or on your desk, whatever it may be. And you could potentially lose some progress by doing that. Something else that I noticed in testing this, and maybe somebody else can figure out how to kind of fix this stuff, is that when I was playing a DS game, my controls were all sorts of messed up. I was trying to play Mario Kart on the DS, and anytime I'd hit the accelerator, it would also be turning to the right. I tried to jump into the settings and configure my controls, but things were acting very, very strange. So DS games might be sort of off limits for now. I do think overall, though, this is... A decent improvement over the stock operating system. It looks much nicer. I think that there's some nice options in there as well, even if it's not quite perfect yet. Let me know if you want to see like a full deep dive into this operating system because there's definitely a lot there. This is not meant to be that. It's not like a full review. It's mostly just installation and then those early first impressions. Like I said, drop that comment down below if you want to see deeper coverage of this alternate operating system for the RG35XXH. Like I said, links to everything are in the description down below, so go check those out and let me know what you think of it yourself. Guys, thanks for watching. Subscribe for more content like this. And until next time, stay nerdy, my friends.